Good morning, Sarah Carver. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You're a grand old flag, you're a high flying flag, and forever peace may wave. To the emblem of the land I love, the home of the free and the brave. Every heart beats true for the red, white, and blue, when it's never a boast or brag. But should all acquaintance be forgot, keep your eye on the grand old flag. Happy St. Patrick's Day, Sac Harbor Elementary. Today is Tuesday, March 17, 2020. The weather forecast today is likely rainy with highs in the 40s. Recess will be in your yard today. Upcoming events. The students will continue their remote learning. Today in history, in 1737, the first St. Patrick's Day was celebrated in the United States, in Boston, Massachusetts. Trivia fact, legend has it that each leaf in the four-leaf clover has a meaning. The four leaves stand for hope, faith, love, and luck. The odds of finding a four-leaf clover is one in 10,000. Thank you and have a lucky day. Thank you, Olivia, for doing a great job with our morning announcements. Top of the morning, Sarah Carver. I'd like to wish everyone a happy St. Patrick's Day and welcome you back to morning program. We hope you had a great time yesterday as we gathered for our first ever remote morning program. I think it was a wonderful way to not only start the day, but to start our week as we've entered into a remote learning journey. Boys and girls, I've already gotten some great reports from your families as well as your teachers that our remote learning plan is off to a great start and everybody's working their hardest, doing their very best, and it sounds like everyone's having a lot of fun along the way too. Boys and girls, today is St. Patrick's Day, but please join me in sending happy birthday wishes to Miss Marr and Ms. Cafiso. And in my family, St. Patrick's Day is a very special day as it is for all families who trace their roots back to Ireland. But what I love about St. Patrick's Day is that no matter where your family may be from, you can all join in in celebrating. One way the Irish love to celebrate is to have some fun and tell some good jokes. Here's a funny one from my good friend and former Sarah Carver Elementary School physical education teacher, Sean Crowley. Knock, knock. Who's there? Irish. Irish who? Irish you a happy St. Patrick's Day. called The Leprechaun's Gold. Long ago, before even your great-grandfather was born, there lived a, in a small village in Ireland a man known to all as Old Pat. Old Pat was a harpist and a good one at that. Many a wedding was made the merrier by Old Pat's harp. In this same 
village dwelled young Tom. Tom had learned his own harp playing from Pat's teaching, but now Tom thought himself a better harpist than old Pat. He was much given to boasting and bragging and charging all the villagers great amounts, amounts of silver for his skills. Old Pat was humble and willing to play his music for free for those who knew he had no means to pay. Foolish old man, scoffed Tom. What use is a gift if not to make you rich? Old Pat replied, I am rich in friends, and that is enough. It is to be supposed that life would have continued along this way for old Pat and young Tom had they not seen the announcement. By order of the king, harping contest to choose the finest harpist in Ireland at the royal palace. All may enter. To be known as the best harpist in Ireland would be an honor indeed, said old Pat. Don't waste your time, old man, answered the sneered Tom. It's a young man like myself they'll be wanting. But Pat shook his head and gathered a few meager possessions for the journey. Aha, thought young Tom. If we travel together, he's sure to offer me a bite of his food and that would save me a penny or two. And so it was that on this night, the two sat together by their fire of twigs. They were foot sore and weary from walking the many miles towards the royal palace. As he listened to Pat practicing for the contest, a sudden thought flashed through young Tom's mind. I could lose to this ridiculous old man. So, as old Pat turned his head for a second, the wicked boy quickly raced and snapped a string on Pat's harp and pushed his own spare string deep into his bag. I'm sorry for your trouble, he said to old Pat, but I have no string to lend you, for I might need it myself. Old Pat sighed. He had no money to buy a new string. The harping contest was as good as lost. Then suddenly through the darkness came a cry, help! The two men shivered for they knew the tales, the tricks played by the poor, on poor travelers by the villain leprechauns. Surely tis the little people that are after us, whispered young Tom. But as the voice rose to a wail, old Pat's kindness of heart proved stronger than his fear of the leprechaun tricks. We must find out who's in trouble, cried Tom. he cried to Tom. Not I, declared young Tom. I'll have nothing to do with it. I'll not take the risk of missing the contest. And he turned his back to the voice and covered his ears. On shaking legs, old Pat walked toward the sound of the voice. In a clearing, he saw a tiny man with his foot down a rabbit hole. Help me, sir, cried the little man. I took off my shoe to rest my feet and a rabbit has taken taken hold of my big toe. Help me. From deep in the burrow came the shrill laugh of the rabbit. Let go, you rogue, the little man yelled down to the hole. I'll have you for dinner, you pesky bag of flea-ridden fur. I'll soon fix that, scoundrel, thought old Pat. He bent down and barked piercingly as the fox might in the night. The rabbit let out a scream of fright and out popped the little old man's toe. Thank you, cried the leprechaun, for the leprechaun he was. Come, said Pat, trying not to laugh. For funnier sight he thought he'd never see. I've not much to offer, but what I have you're welcome to share. Old Pat let the le led the leprechaun back to the fire. I see your fellow traveler has up and gone, said the leprechaun. A brave fellow indeed, he proved to be, but I thank you kindly for your help. I'd like to repay you. I'll be needing no payment, answered old Pat. He picked up his harp and began to play a soft tune to soothe the old man. You play well, said the leprechaun, but I'm thinking your harp is not in a good way. I have broken a string, answered old Pat sadly. I'm on my way to the harping contest at the royal palace. But I'll not win now. I have no money to buy a new string. Ah, declared the leprechaun sharply, so it's the gold you'll be wanting. No, indeed, cried old Pat, mightily alarmed. 
He knew terrible things happened to those who searched for crocs of leprechaun gold. Ah, but yes, I think it's so, answered the leprechaun firmly. Suddenly, old Pat's eyes would not stop from closing. With a sigh, he fell asleep. The leprechaun blew a silvery note on his whistle, and out of the forest came a band of little men, each carrying a bag. He wants the gold, said the leprechauns as he told the tale of old Pat. You know what to do. The little men nodded solemnly as they clicked open their bags. When old Pat awakened the next morning, he looked around in fright, but the leprechaun was gone. It's a lucky escape I've had, cried old Pat as he picked up his harp case and set off for the royal palace. As old Pat reached the courtyard, young Tom took the stage, looking mighty pleased and confident. He began to play a sweet, a sweet tune, but as if bewitched, the strings on his harp began to break. One by one, they twanged and twitched and twirled in the air until all lay dangling. Young Tom gazed at his harp in horror, but then he knew. Leprechauns, he muttered as he hung his head and shuffled from the stage. Now it was old Pat's turn. With sadness in his heart, the old man reached for his harp. Then his eyes widened, for there, inside his bag, lay a glittering golden harp. The leprechaun's gold, gasped old Pat. He lifted the golden harp and began to play. He played the merriest music ever heard, so wonderful that the wind itself stopped to listen. A wild tune it was, which filled the people's hearts with joy and their lips with laughter. As the magic seized their feet, the people began to dance. Soon the courtyard was filled with dancing and singing and a laughing crowd. The other harpists knew now that this was Pat's day and danced along with the people. Even young Tom, who had heard, learned a hard lesson, found generosity growing in his heart. When the final note faded away, the king rose from his throne and beckoned to Pat. Old man, said the king, the prize is yours. Never have I heard such music. From now on, you will play always for me and my people. You are awarded the title Royal Harpist of Ireland. From the nearby forest came a tinkling sound of a little leprechaun laughing. The end. So think about the kindness and the kind acts that were shown in this story. And today, I want you to go out and see if you can do something kind and maybe look for a shamrock or two in your yard. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Good morning, Santa Harbor Elementary. Uh, and happy St. Patrick's Day. I hope you all are home, but wearing a little bit of green just to celebrate uh, the amazing holiday that us Irish folk like to celebrate. I'm missing you and I'm missing this week because of course we always spend it doing a little dancing and kicking up our heels. So I thought we could do a little jig together this morning. Uh, for some of you, this may be a review and for others, if it's your first time, it's okay. We're gonna go nice and slow to begin with. So you're gonna put your right foot out. I'll put my left just so we're mirroring each other. And you always have your upper body nice and straight. Your arms should always just be gently at your side. And you're gonna jump in and cross it over, just like this. Then you're gonna kick it out and put it in the back and take little steps. One, two, three, four. Do the whole thing again. So you're gonna jump in, kick out, bring it to the back, two, three, four. Jump in, kick out, and back, two, three, four. And the last step is a little different. Instead of jumping in, you just kick out, put it in the back, and then step to the back again, two, three, four. And then you're ready to do it on the other side. Okay, so let's do it one more time real quick. Jump in, kick out, and back two, three, four. Jump in, kick out, and back two, three, four. Jump in, kick out, and back two, three, four. Out, and back, and back two, three, four. Okay, we're gonna put some music on. It'll be a little slower than our normal, but uh, it'd be good for you to jump right in. Make sure your arms are straight, your shoulders are back, and of course, smiling. Here we 
go. Five, six, seven, eight. Jump in, kick out. Back two, three, four. Jump in, kick out. Back two, three, four. Jump in, kick out. Back two, three, four. Out and back and back two, three, four. Nice job. So we're going to turn on the music to normal speed, which is a little fast and can be a little tricky, but this is a single jig and it tends to move a little faster than some of the other dancers. There's a bunch of Irish dances to do, so we'll get ready to do this one normal. Five, six, seven, go. Jump in, kick out. Jump in, kick out. Other side. Here's a great song called Shipping Out to Boston, and I want you to clap along. Get ready for the beat. I'm running. You may be asking yourself why I'm sitting next to this giant bowl full of potatoes on St. Patrick's Day. Peapod brought me lots of potatoes, not much else. So now I have to come up with some recipes to make. I was hoping you guys could make a list of as many potato recipes as you can come up with. Different ways to eat potatoes and email them to me. Whoever gives me the most complete, longest list of potato ideas by 3 o'clock today will win a prize. I got a lot of these things to cook, and I need help. So I'm looking forward to the emails. Hope you guys have a great day. Mm -hmm. 